Well, final video of 2018. And you know what? I feel like this is the perfect video to end on 2018, considering I started 2018 on this topic with, you know, the whole Logan Paul suicide forest. I don't think I need to explain it. You, you probably know it. So it's now been almost a year, or actually just about a year since this happened, and Logan Paul has finally finally come out with some something that actually seems like a well-constructed apology. So Logan Paul uploaded a video called Logan Paul, why 2018 was the most important year of my life. And so far it's been pretty well received. The like to dislike ratio is actually very good for a Logan Paul video. So we're gonna be checking this out in the last video of 2018. Uh, seeing if his apology was good, can we forgive him or can we give him a second chance? Let's see if he's pulled his socks back up. Hey, what's up? That's me, Logan. What do you look like? I used to be a regular kid from Ohio. You know, I loved sports, I paid attention in school, and was always a bit awkward. But then when I was about 10 years old, I picked up a video camera and became Logan Paul. And your address? Butthead Street. Wow, you're a jerk. Don't call back again. Fast forward. This was me in 2016, which ended up being the best year of my life. I mean, he, he was dabbing, but ugh, we'll let it slide. He was showing us successful and how happy he was in previous years. And it's kind of like a contrast because then it goes on to, you know, 2018 when the whole suicide forest thing happened. And slowly but surely, in my endless pursuit of more views and more subscribers, it was becoming clear that the vlog mentality was getting out of hand. But I did not see that. Here's what I saw. Oh, mamma mia, take a look around. Oh, yo, it looks so good at night. This boy just dropped 40k on a presidential Rolex. So how about that vehicle, though? What's in the bags? $11,600 worth of Gucci clothes. Bro, is this solid gold? Solid gold. $20,000, it's yours. That's my boy. <laughs> the machine was beginning to take on a mind of its own. As my hunger for success was growing exponentially, so was my ego. Yeah, boy, I'm the Maverick! Now this might be one of the strongest points he's made here. He finally, finally has addressed his ego. Now shown by those clips, Logan Paul has always had this really egotistical mindset of just flexing for his viewers, trying to make this vision that if you don't have Maverick merch, you're not like part of the gang almost. And for a lot of people, love kids, who can't actually afford that, I'm sure they would have felt left out if Logan Paul was constantly saying, buy my merch to become a maverick, but they can't afford it. You know what I'm saying? So it is really good that he has addressed his ego here because to be fucking frank, he had a fucking massive one. That could be taken out of context so goddamn much. The line for what was acceptable it became more and more foggy and the disrespect began to skyrocket. Another point he has just addressed is when he went to Venice and was jumping in the rivers. This is actually good. He's not trying to just cover up his mistakes here. Instead, he's presenting them in video form and saying, you know what, my mind got to me a bit much, okay? And it's not that I felt the rules didn't apply to me. I knew they did. I just didn't care about the consequences if I broke them. I didn't even consider them. I was the 22-year-old, blonde-haired, blue-eyed kid from Ohio with 45 million followers on the internet. Every single day, my actions were validated by five to seven million viewers, and as long as I wasn't doing any harm, no one was trying to stop me. And then, in December of 2017, I went to Japan. It was the perfect storm of circumstance, ignorance, ego, and downright stupidity. This is actually a good apart. I can't actually physically believe it, but he's pulling off a, a good apology video. He's not backtracking and saying, okay guys, I did that, but it's because of this. Instead he's saying, okay, you know what? I got egotistical, the numbers got to my head. I didn't really see the difference between right and wrong and I fucked up, I made mistakes, and I shouldn't have done it, it was stupid. I'm so disgusted. How could somebody not realize how fucked up this is? This crosses the line, and I am not surprised that he would do something like this. It doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever as a human being. How about a little bit of empathy, like a normal human being, instead of being a moron? Go to a morgue! 
If you're that fucking morbid. He thought that that was a cool thing to do. In less than 24 hours, I became the most hated person on the planet. I had made an inexcusable mistake, completely destroyed my image, lost every professional relationship that I had, became the internet's favorite meme, and most importantly, had my eyes opened wide to the consequences of my actions. Again, he's just shown some sources of people who attacked him for doing this. The backlash was needed for him to realize this, if you know what I mean. Like, if he hasn't received this backlash from creators all over the platform, my size, big sizes of channels, I think he would have just kept this mental insanity for do it for the vlog on and on. So in a way, it's kind of good that we talked about this topic. I felt every ounce of disappointment and hate directed at me. And while it was 100% my fault, it was critical that I felt all of it. Now, here's where I made a significant mistake. I went into panic mode. Being disliked was my biggest fear in the entire world. So, in a scramble to try and reverse the past, I asked myself, how do I fix this? When instead, the question I should have been asking was, how do I fix me? Now, I'm actually really impressed by what he's saying here. He's saying, instead of trying to fix his reputation, because, you know, kids watch him, when parents find this out, they're obviously going to stop kids from watching him. Instead of trying to fix his career, he's saying he should have just fixed himself, and that's very, very good of him. Attempted to bounce back with an anti-suicide PSA and a donation, but I was still moving too fast. This is a good point he brought up, because I'm sure a lot of you know, like, Pyrocynical did a video on it. What you mean disgrace, boy? I took a break. Besides, I'm still lit as f What other YouTuber you know can take a three-week break and still gain a million subscribers? How am I going to open up this video? How am I going to make it really just fantastic and get everyone back on board even the people that despise me i know humble brag about how many subs i got after making a video on a suicide victim it just seemed really you know disingenuous and like he hadn't really cared about his actions from what he's trying to say is he was just moving too fast and trying to fix his reputation when instead he should have just stepped back for a bit maybe took half a year off honestly just to fix his mentality before coming back onto YouTube because you can see by this clip that he didn't do it right. Now I can kind of relate to this in a way because when the whole Logan Paul thing happened I just kind of jumped on the train a little bit. I think it's because if you've seen my uh, anti-suicide video you'll have known I just had to deal with suicides and to me after seeing this really pissed me off and for Logan Paul to mock suicide it really just pissed me off so much so I just put it into first gear and went after him and it's not one of my proudest videos like some of the points I made in that video were just terrible it's just me angrily make a video when instead I should have just stepped back and maybe constructed it a bit more better if you know what I mean I couldn't trust myself I wouldn't send my team the videos for a review I didn't listen to my friends and I refused to adapt my content it was the highest degree of self-sabotage. And a lot of people asked, why didn't it get reviewed by the editor or whoever edited it? Surely would have been like, Logan, you can't release this. This is f***ed. He didn't have a filter or he didn't get someone to review it. He was just in this vlog mentality, as he says, where he just wanted to release some more content and get more extreme. And he probably just thought that people would be impressed by it. Finally, after nearly running the rest of my life into the ground, I received a blessing in disguise. Obviously, oh, man's got this belt right now. If any YouTuber wants it, you can come get it. Jake Paul, Logan Paul. I saw this as an opportunity to turn my disoriented emotions into fuel. After everything that had happened since January, this was my chance to truly, truly take a step back from the internet and focus on something else with the unrelenting passion that I knew I had. Now I like this, how he's saying that he went too fast, then he got invited to the KSI versus Logan Paul fight. He used that anger and mentality inside of him instead to channel into something that he was passionate about and you know what that's good because that gave him the break he needed from the internet and he also mentions that it fixed the relationship with his brother I, it was probably fake i'm not gonna lie like the beef between them i told myself at the beginning of the year that i was not gonna let that become my legacy and that i was gonna not ask for 
forgiveness, but earn a chance to be forgiven. Have I earned that? Not yet. Not yet. As I've matured this year, I've gotten to exercise my creativity in different ways with the number one podcast in the world called Impulsive. The things you've been through this year, have you shared yet on this podcast or on your blog the three biggest lessons you learned from this year? What's, uh, the, what's the one you shared? The one is slow down. It is the first thing that comes to my mind, and I can not point to that as the reason for what happened, the singular reason for what happened, but that is, a, that is huge. What would be lesson number two, the biggest lesson of the year? Listen to the people around you. Listen to what they're saying. Listen to your audience. Listen to your friends. Listen to your family. You're not right about everything, old Logan. What would be the third one? Biggest lesson that you think will transform not only your business, your brand, your empire, but also your life in 2019 and beyond. I think empathy. I think, I think being aware of people beyond just yourself. So that was his apology. It, it was kind of an apology and kind of like a montage of just all how he's powered through this year. I really hate to say this, but I actually enjoyed it. It was it was fantastically edited, first of all. You can tell he put a lot of time into this. It wasn't made in like a week. You can just tell. He also talks about how he doesn't expect to be forgiven, but he wants another chance. Now, he also did address, you know, the rat tasing and stuff like that. I think the thing you're wanting to know is, do I personally give Logan Paul another chance? Don't get me wrong, he's not... I don't forgive him for filming a dead, a suicide victim's dead body. However, I'm willing to give him another chance. When he's expressed how he was mentally, it just shows that he did care and that his ego had just gotten too big for his head. Right guys, that was the end of today's video. I say today's, this is the end of 2018. After you've watched this, just go out, have a good time, go to a pub. If you're not old enough to go to a pub, just go and um, drink some Ribena or something. I hope you guys have a fantastic new year. I've got so much planned on this channel. I'd also like to give out some shout outs to some of my top subscribers this year. Just to name a couple. There's Alfie, an educated bear, I think. He's been around the channel for years, so shout out to him. Smell your mum, you absolute melon. What a shout out. Tomo, Max FTE, Ben Loughton, and SpongeBob SquarePants. There's some subscriber shout outs for this year. You guys have been killing it with comments and stuff. Peace, peace, bros. Yeah.